Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisticates by Mary. I got a doozy for you this week. This is an Avenger superhero cake that I did at work a couple weeks ago. And the reason why I did it a couple weeks ago and you're just now seeing it is because I had eight hours worth of footage to edit. So this cake is mostly edible. I will explain the parts that are not edible to you as we get to them. But if this sounds like something you want to see, stick around and we'll get right to it after the intro. So this is going to be a slightly longer video than you typically see, but there's a lot of elements to this cake. So we're going to start with the board. I actually covered it with this cobblestone texture technique with just some regular fondant. And I'm using this mat that I have that I'm going to press it into the mat to get the, the design pattern into the fondant. And I did this with a few pieces, let's see, four or five, maybe five or six pieces of fondant. I'm gonna show you the one and then you'll just know that I did this throughout. So I covered it with cornstarch, pressed the fondant into it, released it, and I'm cutting off the excess pieces. You could try to get it in there just perfect without having to cut off these extra little pieces, but I find, you know what, that's a little bit more work than I wanna do. It only takes a second to use your X-Acto knife and carve this off. So there is the pattern. And I, what I love about this mat is that your pieces just fit together. And I put the board on it to see if I needed any more, and I did. So I cut an extra piece to fill in some spaces. I actually was able to utilize some of the offcuts also from the, the four main pieces. And I covered the board with some, just some um, shortening, sorry. Brain stopped working with just some shortening so that it could stick. You could also spray it with water if you prefer. I just don't like to get my board wet if I can help it. I know it's got the grease proof coating on it, but I just, mm, I don't want to mess with it. So here I am piecing together the parts that did not get covered by the four main pieces. And I'm just using my X-Acto knife to cut off the excess. Now to give it that aged, um war-torn look i'm just using a mixture of black petal dust and some everclear brushing it on just do it haphazardly it doesn't have to look nice and neat because it's not supposed to and it's going to settle in all those little nooks and crannies so you'll want your paint to be a little on the thinner side and then i'm just using a paper towel that i had dampened with some more everclear and i'm brushing off that extra because really i just want it to be in the nooks and crannies and a little bit of a color on top so it's not a matte gray and there it is so i'm going to set it aside to let it dry this i did the first day so it dried overnight. And then to make the Thor's hammer, I am using a combination of just Rice Krispie treats, or Rice Krispie cereal, and just marshmallow. I'm just eyeballing it, there's no measurement here. Um, I would say maybe a half a cup, wait, no, let's say a cup of marshmallows to about two cups of Rice Krispie treats, that's just a guess. And I covered my hands in some shortening just so they didn't stick and you're just gonna mold it into shape you do have some working time with this but since there's no butter in it it does firm up a little faster and that's really what you want for a topper or for a cake decoration is for it to to dry up firmer but you do have to work with it a little faster and i'm just using my uh fondant smoothers to just kind of get the the basic shape into it which is basically just a um a block a, a rectangular block and I'm putting my skewer. This part is part of the non-edible. I just have a skewer that I'm using as the base for the, um, the handle. And I just marked in where I wanted it. And I just, with the skewer, I just sharpened it with um, an X-Acto knife to get a point. And I'm trying to get those beveled edges in with my fondant smoother. As it's drying and cooling, it's a little easier to work with for those parts. And to get this stick into the, the handle, into the, um, the Rice Krispie Treats, I just used melted chocolate. And I rolled out some brown, some brown fondant. I think it's fondant. Yeah, I think I just used brown fondant for the handle. And I just put some piping gel on it and just wrapping it around that handle. And pushing it together on the backside and cutting off that excess. 
And then just smooth it with your fingers. You can use, like I did there, a fondant smoother if you like also. And I'm using my vein or veining tool to mark in the lines of the straps. Instead of wrapping it around, this was a little easier. And I didn't show, but I actually went in between these lines and did a smaller one. I don't know where that footage went. It's a lot of footage, folks. I'm telling you. Um, for the, ha the hammer head, the head of the hammer? Like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I just used modeling chocolate for this. Gray colored modeling chocolate because it's a little easier to to put in the lines and the design details in the modeling chocolate. And it's a little easier to get it wrapped around and to blend those scenes a little bit. And to get it to stick to the, the modeling or the um, Rice Krispie Treats, I just used another, some more shortening. Just pinch together that excess and cut it off and then you can smooth it down. Modeling chocolate for this is great because you don't need it to hold the structure of the entire hammer since you've got the Rice Krispie Treats underneath it. You're just using it to cover it. And use those fondant smoothers. Use, use your tools, people. This is a lot of smoothing. This took a long time. I have a lot of footage cut out. Because you don't want to watch this for, you know, two hours. <laughs> okay, maybe 30 minutes. And I'm going to use my veining tool again to uh, mark in the design elements. I'm just eyeballing this. I was a little off, but I kind of fudged it and got it back into shape. But I'm just eyeballing this. I have an inspiration picture on the side there, but I'm just, didn't print out a template or anything. Modeling chocolate is fairly forgiving. So if you mess it up, you can go back in, smooth it out and re restart it. Be sure to wrap it around all the sides of your hammer since you're going to see the front and the back. Sorry, it's a little out of frame. I didn't realize it. Okay, so now on to the the shield. Captain America shield. I wanted this to be more 3D-ish instead of flat. So I rolled it out so that it's thinner on the sides than in the middle. I put some plastic wrap over it and I used my circle cutter and you can see that it gives it more of a soft edge instead of just using your cutter without the plastic wrap. And I went around and I just kind of refined it. Made it more of a dome. I'm just making sure that it's holding its shape by putting your cutter over the top of it and just kind of wiggling it around and it kind of shapes it back into shape. Just releasing it from the surface there and moving it to the side. Now I'm going to be using some blue and some white and some red, obviously, <laughs> to make the circles and the rest of the details. I wanted this to be more set into the red, so I used my rolling pin and my hand to kind of push it in a little bit. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just using my different sized um, circle cutters to get the rings little water to stick it to the surface. I'm just making sure that it's as smooth as I can get it. And around the sides. The final touch is the star. And I just used a regular metal star cutter that you can find anywhere for that star and all the all the other white stars that are going to be on the cake. So to make the template for this, I just used, I had it printed off on paper, and then I just used packing tape on both sides, and that makes it more rigid and easier to work with. And cut out what you don't need. Oh, 
and then I just cut out a, the circle with some fondant and actually I think this is fondant and modeling chocolate together and then I'm cutting out with an exacto knife the pattern the a pattern um, I did put some shortening on top of the product to get the template to stick but with shortening you can pull the template right off when you don't want it on there anymore and I leave it on there as I'm putting the top part on the bottom circle so that way it holds its shape instead of getting misshapen as you're moving it around now I wanted to use, add some I guess we'll call it patina to this emblem so I'm using again shortening my best friend right <laughs> and then I'm just gonna brush the gold over it not trying to get complete coverage because I want some of that dark dark gray to peek through a little bit so it looks aged and war torn again that's kind of the theme for this whole cake now I'm not a big Avengers or superhero fan I have boys but they don't they're not into this so if I say things wrong please forgive <laughs> I don't know really what I'm talking about but now I'm making the hand whoever's hand this is I think this is Iron Man hand he's got the light in the center anyway inform me please I don't know but to make a hand I'm using all modeling chocolate and I'm just cutting you know get the basic shape use your hand as a reference and you need to just roll it out cut the shape of your fingers and remember that your thumb is shorter than your pinky your middle finger is longer than the other two fingers in the middle and I'm softening up those edges just a little bit I was not real happy with the way this hand turned out but it, it's it's okay I could do better but not only was I doing this cake, I had other orders I was trying to fill too. So sometimes you have to kind of cut, cut your losses when um, time is an issue. Go for the overall look of what you're doing and don't try not to get fixated on the details as much. I need to practice what I preach right here because this is really hard for me. I'm so much about the details that it's, it's hard. So I am marking in the creases the underside of your knuckles that will help you form the shape of the hand in that curled position so I'm using my hand as a reference there and just kind of bending them into shape a little bit now I did need to let this set up overnight so this I did the day before putting it together also and you will see when I get to the part in the palm it did change but my boss did tell me she told me I have lights to put in there and I forgot so I went ahead and I finished the entire thing and the next day she said where's the light gonna go I said I don't know in the center I guess I'll have to <laughs> fix that so anyway this is how I did the center I used the back side of cutters so that I had a softer edge and I just marked in those lines and I'm putting in some more lines with my tool my veiner I use this a lot there's a lot of um, using your tools to give the look of something that would be really hard to get otherwise I mean this would be hard to do you could do it but use use your tools and then I painted the center that will no longer be there at the end <laughs> I was trying to give the look of a light in the center so I used some edible white paint and I use my thin paintbrush to mark in the blue I drug that blue color into the middle added a little bit more white in the center it's kind of the same technique of when you're painting an eyeball and I use my my gold paint around the outside edge which is your gold luster dust or your gold highlighter with some Everclear and then I use some brown actually I think it was the black petal dust into the creases there to bring those out a little bit so here's my light that I didn't remember I had so I'm making <laughs> this food safe to put into the cake by wrapping it with some saran wrap it's just a twist light and there I'm making sure that it's gonna fit into the hole that I'm pushing into the center there so I just went ahead and cut out the center yeah I messed up the gold a little bit but that's okay and I made sure that it was gonna fit now covering the cake with the fondant I'm gonna speed right through this because you see me do this probably 50 times but I use satin ice and I just covered the cake with it 
I mean, you can go back and look at other videos to see some more detailed description of how I cover a cake with fondant. But I just wanted to show the process, show that I actually did cover it with fondant. And I'm using my Flexi Smoother and my Fondant Smoother to kind of cut in a sharper corner. And now I'm making these stripes for the bottom tier, the white and red stripes. I just rolled out white fondant and red fondant, cut it to the height I needed, and then used a strip cutter to cut out the strips. Set them aside, let them firm up a little bit while I worked on the top tier. Now this top tier, I'm not exactly sure what this texture is. If it's supposed to be metal, metal plates like soldered together, I'm not sure, I'm going off a picture again. So I covered, oh don't mind my bird. I covered the cake in the gray fondant and then I'm just using my my veining tool to push in the lines all over the cake. You can make them fairly deep because I did not roll out the fondant super super thin. I left it a little thicker since I knew I was going to need to to manipulate it some. And then I'm just using the tip of the tool to mark in the little rivet dots. I'm not sure. Again, remember, don't know. <laughs> if this was cars, I would know it. Or something ninja, I would know that more. But do this over the entire cake. So to give it some more texture, I just roughed up a piece of foil and just pushing it into that fondant. That's why you need to do these details when it's freshly covered. And I did the same with the hammer, which yes, it set up overnight, but since it was modeling chocolate, it was it's still softer. And I used that same mixture of the black petal dust and the Everclear to get it brushed into the crevices. And I'm wiping off the excess with just Everclear and a clean paper towel. Okay, I had to move away from my bird. He's a little too excited about something outside the window. So, and I did the same thing with the hammer. And now I'm just making the number topper for on top. I did this with gum paste and I just eyeballed it. I'm just going for a one and a zero that I'm gonna add some patina to also. And I'm just going for those blocky letters. Or not letters, numbers, sorry. And I needed them to be on skewers, so you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm just just twisting a skewer into it, spinning it as I, as I push it into the, the product. And to add a little bit more patina, I added some pearl dust. Some, just some regular pearl dust, brushed onto not the entire thing, but parts of it. And I did the same for the, the topper, the number topper with the gold. I had added some black, you can kind of see it there, but I kind of cut that footage out. And, but I am showing you how I'm doing the, the gold. Now let's put it all together. Put a little bit of buttercream on the board to stick the cake onto so it doesn't move around. I'm putting my bubble tea straws in and then cutting them flush to the surface. I put a little more buttercream and then I am pushing that top tier down. Applying the stripes. And I had chilled that top tier for about 20 minutes and that's why I could handle it like I did. Now I'm cutting off the tops. I cut them, I thought I cut them all the same height but they weren't once I put them on the cake. Um, so I just went with my X-Acto knife and just drew a cut a straighter line over the top. I'm gonna put a strip of red, rolled red fondant on top of it anyways, but you know, it's easier to have a, the same height. And there, I had just rolled that out with my hands and then just a plate, uh, attached it with water. And I'm just putting on the stars that I had cut out, just like the star on the, what do you call it? The shield, that's the word. And I'm attaching these details, well, the A, whatever that is, emblem. <laughs> So confusing with some buttercream and I used a, a ball of fondant to put the shield on so that it could sit at an angle and now I'm cutting the cape that's gonna go across the top I'm using my skewers to give the folds 
or not the folds, the pleats in, in the, in the, uh, in the cave. Just line them up and then put your piece of fondant over the top of it. Press in around the skewers and then kind of push them together. Remove your skewers and gather it up at the top. Now I'm lifting it up and I'm placing it on the cake. Um, I kind of lost that footage too or I, my camera quit working I'm not sure but you don't see me lifting it up on there but I just gently lifted it up and placed it on I had put some water on the fondant to, for it to stick and now I'm adding some more of that black petal dust to give it more of that aged look just around the stars there's my boss <laughs> Sorry. she did give me permission to show her that's her introduction that's that's us that's exactly how we are it's love her anyway so I'm just adding that black petal dust into some nooks and crannies and around some edges to kind of add to the look and I had added a little toothpick into the Rice Krispie treats of the hammer just so it wouldn't move now when it comes to these non edible elements just tell your customers just like with anything else tell your customers communicate what is not edible so they know and it's not a surprise so adding the hand to the front, that was fun. <laughs> First of all, I'm cutting in a little circle where um, the light will sit into the cake a little bit. And I used some piping gel to attach this because those fingers wanted to fold forward and I needed something that's gonna be a little more sticky. So I used piping gel and just manipulated it and stuck that light right in there. And then final touch, I used some rock candy, some black rock candy here and there to show, I don't know, that things have been destroyed. <laughs> A little final touch on the cake. And I'm attaching those with some more piping gel. So this was a lot of work, but a lot of fun, guys. Like I said, eight hours of footage, and that was just the decorating part of it. That's not the baking. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you did, please like, subscribe, share, do all the things, comment, and I, I love to hear from you guys. So I will catch you the next time. Thanks guys, bye.